Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at an extension called CG Impact Report. So at first I saw CG Impact and thought CGI. I thought like there were somebody's playing off of that a little bit, but it's not really anything to do with computer generated imagery. CG stands for component and group. Impact Report says it's going to tell you, you know, what components and groups are doing to your model. This is a great extension. If you've got a big bloated monstrous model and it's getting a little bit slow, it's getting a little chunky and you need to clean it up. Um, so unlike purge, purge is a native command that goes through and gets rid of the stuff that you're not using. CG impact report will do that also, but it does a good job of identifying what's in your model and allows you to kind of go through and fine tune to clean up those items. It's, it's really cool. It's, it's a, like I said, if you're working collaboratively or if you're working with a model that has a lot of entourage, imported components, that sort of thing, it's going to make it way easier to clean it up rather than just weeding through Outliner and trying to find things. So uh, let's take a look at it. All right, so I'll throw a link to this down in the description as well, but here's the Extension Warehouse page. It is a free extension you can just install. It's from How to SU. Um, it's been around for a while. The first version is supported was 2021, so it's been a couple of years. Uh, but it is, like it says here, it's a diagnostic tool. It tells you about the components and groups that are in your model, and it gives you some tools to kind of uh, find potential troublemakers, I'll call them, and uh, figure out what to do with them. So let's go ahead and run it. So I have here a model. You guys have seen me use this in a couple different videos. This is a, a house model that I have. Uh, it's got some stuff in there. There's a little bit of entourage, some trees, fence, uh, some stuff here sitting in the garage. Um, there's also some items on the inside. I do like the bathrooms and, and kitchen all have the, you know, counters and sinks and that kind of stuff. It's not overly heavy. It doesn't have a bunch of furniture in it yet. But uh, there's enough stuff in here that there's there's quite a few components. And so let's actually go take a look before we pull up the extension. If I go to model info and I go to statistics, um, it does. So it says not a heavy model, but you'd see you do have 333 component instances and 223 groups saved into this model. So there's lots of stuff. Some of those groups, of course, are breaking down the model. And, you know, so this is a group, this is a group, this is a group. Uh, so some of that happens, but there is a lot of stuff that is extra stuff that I may or may not actually need in here. Anyhow, I wanted to run this CG impact report on here. So I'm going to go ahead and click right here. It does show up once you install it. It does show up under extensions. So I can go ahead and click that there. And all it, I mean... Again, you guys know how much I love simple extensions that just do their thing and get out of the way, and that's exactly what this does. When you run it, it pulls up a list and it tells you, here's everything in this model. So that, that first off, pretty cool, pretty simple, but it also tells you what's an unused definition. So unused definitions, for those of you who were not familiar, anytime you import something into this, into a working model, a copy of it gets saved even if you delete it off the screen. So if I go to 3D Warehouse and I say, I want to check out this car because I might put it in the driveway and I import it and I go, ooh, that car's ugly, I don't like it. I select it and delete it. That instance of that car is still saved in the model. It's just not on the screen. So it is a, an unused definition is what they call it. So it's saved in the model, but we're not actually showing it on screen. So in here, I have a bunch of those, right? So all these are unused definitions and they're all being saved in the model and they're not actually getting used. So I don't even know what some of these are. Some of these are maybe made by me. The ones are just called group. Uh, some of these are maybe part of things I downloaded at some point. If you download a component or a model from 3D Warehouse, uh, it will show up as a group or it'll show, you know, grouped, it'll show up as a component or group in your model. But inside of that component group, there may be other components and groups. So when I have something here like this is called a handle or an extension arm, there's a good chance that that is a piece of geometry that is part of a larger model I imported at some point, decided I didn't want or didn't need and deleted. So that's why I have all of these. I was not just like, downloading a ton of stuff in, into this model. I didn't download 100 different models and delete them. This is probably maybe five or six different models that I downloaded and didn't want, so I got rid of. But I didn't clear their definition out of the model. So the nice thing is there's a long explanation for one button I'm going to push. 
purge unused is going to find any of these groups or components that are not saved or not actually in the active drawing model. They're, they're just saved and it's going to get rid of them. So that's going to watch my number of definitions. Uh, I hit purge unused. 147 unused definitions have been purged. Along with that, 63 unused materials. So materials are oftentimes images that are saved and they can be huge bloaters of models. They can add a whole bunch of size to models. So that's kind of nice. I can get rid of that. There we go, down to 159 and they're all being used. So that's, I mean this, and like I said, this is something that I could do as part of regular purge to get rid of unused definitions that can happen automatically. But this is kind of nice because it actually goes through and lists them out. Something else I can do here is I can sort, if I click on any of these, these titles at the top, I can actually sort by that property. So how what has the most entities? And it's showing, you know, smallest to largest. Now I'm gonna go largest to smallest. So here I have this thing called 5316-4, probably a part number for something. And I can see I have 2,000 or 22,000 entities, faces and edges inside that. There's four of them throughout the model, so it's counting up to 88,000 additional entities for that one thing. I don't know what that one thing is, but I'm trying to think of anything I have four of that is essential to this model. And I, I don't know, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. So let's go ahead and see what that is. So one of the things you have here is we can say select. If I hit select, it's going to highlight that thing. Now, in the case of this where I have a house, uh, there's a good chance that the thing that I just selected is highlighted right now, but I can't see it because I'm on the outside of the house. This is where X-ray comes into play. If you hit X on your keyboard, make sure I'm in the model, then hit X on the keyboard. Uh, there we go. I got a see-through version, so it's going to be easier to see when I toggle on that object, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit clear. I'm going to unselect everything, so I'm going to hit clear. And then I'm going to turn that on again. Just watch the model and see where that red or the the blue highlight shows up. And oh, it's right there. I just saw it. So it's these sync handles. These sync hang handles are tens of thousands of faces and edges each. So that in its in and of itself is not a bad thing. I mean. Uh, it's possible this this model runs quick and snappy enough that it's really not causing to. Oh, we can see another one. There's another one right back there. It's not causing any issues specifically, but if I want to fine tune this model, make it run a little bit better, I may want to go swap that out for another one or something like that. So the cool thing is by selecting and highlighting it, now I am free to go into components and swap the component with a different one. Or if I just want to get them out of the model, I could just hit delete on my keyboard; they'd all be gone. Um, but yeah, it's a great way to find and identify those models. Let's see, there, there's two of them back here in this bathroom. Um, so it's a great way to find the parts of a model that are, are big and causing problems. Um, one thing you may want to consider using something like this is maybe you end up sooner or later with different versions of a model or something like that, where I have a hero model with all the good stuff that I render out and then another one's more performant that goes to layout or something like that. I don't know. There's different ways you could use it. That's your workflow. But what this extension does is makes it very quick, very easy to go find those high impact groups and components, find out where they are, select them, and if necessary, actually modify them. That is CG Impact Report, free extension available right now, Extension Warehouse. And uh, like I said, link down below in the description. A lot of times we will show you extensions that are brand new, like something that just came out. It's so cool. You got to check it out. Uh, sometimes we come back and show you some of these classic ones that we end up using in our own workflows here in, in our design team. And uh, that's always fun because new and shiny is awesome. I love new and shiny stuff. It's, it's fun. It's cool to get the newest thing and find new technology. But sometimes there's these gems that have been around for a little while that are hugely helpful. Uh, and something simple yet productive like this. This is like the perfect extension for me. I just love it. Hit a button. Here's your information. What do you want to do with it? Oh, so good. So uh, yeah, if you work with large models or you work with a lot of entourage, check this out. This is going to be a huge time saver. Because um, one of the things that I run into is I will go find a model in 3D Warehouse. It'll look good. It'll look like it has the right level of detail. Import it. But I don't always 
scrub it as much as I should. I don't go in and I find that, you know, how many, how many entities is this going to add? What's this going to add to my model? And sometimes I will have something like that, a tiny little detailed piece where I accidentally put in screw threads that are buried inside that I'm never going to see or something like that. So it's a great way to double check your model, make sure that the, the, the faces and edges that you're committing to are the ones you need for your model to look the way it should. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Have you used this extension? What do you think of it? Uh, is it new to you? Are you gonna give it a try? Is there a different extension you think we should show on this, on this uh, video series? Let us know that down in the comments. We like making these videos a lot, but we'd like them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.